I have a confession to make. I can see the logic behind a Republican viewpoint. I know, I didn't think it was possible in this day and age either. I can actually sympathize with the desire to own guns. I really can. Especially in rural areas, the need to protect one's home and property can be a real imperative. Problem is when the gun lobby tries to use the Second Amendment to justify this. No. Bad GOP. Bad. You can advocate for gun legislation all you want. Just don't corrupt the Bill of Rights by pretending that it promises you something that it doesn't. Your so-called Second Amendment rights, as we interpret them today, are fantastical bullshit, and this is why. Here's the misstep. People think that the Second Amendment says that the people have the right to bear arms. That's partially true. Selectively extracting text can be fun. But here's what the Second Amendment actually says in full. A well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. First of all, that's not even grammatically correct. America jumped on that anti-intellectual bandwagon pretty early. Second of all, do you notice that part about a well-regulated militia? Are you a well-regulated militia? No? then shut the fuck up. The Second Amendment does not promise you the right to own the largest penis extension you can find. It promises the people the ability to operate their own privately funded military force outside of the confines of the federally operated military. Greatest hits include the National Guard, the Naval Militia, and the Civil War. Constitutional right to blow away beer cans with your automatic rifle while listening to Sweet Home Alabama is nothing more but a figment of your imagination. And this is the way it was for well over 200 years. In fact, the Supreme Court has even ruled that the Militia Clause takes precedent over the Bear Arms Clause. It wasn't until the late 1970s that a little group known as the NRA called for the completely novel interpretation that we see so readily spewed today. And this is where it gets completely insane, because conservatives are usually the ones who criticize progressives for not adhering to originalism. They tend to scoff at the idea of a living, breathing constitution when their new interpretation of the Second Amendment is one of the best examples of a living, breathing constitution I can think of. All law in the United States is malleable and subject to evolution over time, including the Constitution and including Supreme Court rulings. Shocking, I know. And if you don't believe me, try going down to the courthouse sometime to sell off your slaves. It wasn't even until the late aughts. I don't understand that term. Aughts? How do two zeros formulate the word ought? Can someone explain? It wasn't until the late double zeros that the Supreme Court made the ruling that people have the right to own handguns. Well, actually, I am a member of the militia. The Reserve Militia. The Reserve Militia is a militia in the same way that... I don't really have an analogy for this. You're not a goddamn militia. The concept of a reserve militia simply means that you are eligible for a draft. You know, in reserve. In absolutely no way are you a well-regulated militia, as dictated in the Second Amendment. I'm part of the reserve militia, but God help you if you want me in your standing army, because I can't shoot for shit, and I'm pretty much the opposite of well-regulated. With my luck, I'd probably be the guy who accidentally shoots himself in the foot and has to go home early. And honestly, I'm probably somewhere near the top of the barrel if you were randomly pulling kids off the street these days. But, for the sake of argument, let's assume that the reserve militia is a real thing, and it totally counts towards the Second Amendment. Well, the reserve militia is all able-bodied males at least 17 years of age and under 45 years of age. So. Sorry ladies, no guns for you. But hey, that's no big deal. You guys are used to rampant misogyny from your party, right? Oh, and that also disqualifies all men over the age of 45, which somehow I think would take a bite out of the NRA's membership list. So even if you're to say that the reserve militia counts towards the right of the people to form a well-regulated militia, you've just qualified what? 
20% of the population is eligible to carry firearms at most, it doesn't really help your argument no matter which way you swing that. But I'm a responsible gun owner and you have no right to take away my freedoms because I didn't do anything wrong. Gee, I wonder which other groups feel similarly. The fact that you would bitch about me wanting to take away your guns while you have tried for almost a century now to take away my pot is the height of hypocrisy. And you have the gall to try and tell people that they can't get married? Gay marriage, by the way, has historically not led to the slaughter of any children. You dare try and impose who can and cannot get married, while you invoke the very same Bill of Rights that you so willfully ignore when you apply to other people, just so you can justify your own pointless hobby. I have nothing but contempt for you if you think this way. You are truly a cancerous growth upon society. Bigotry makes me mad. If you want the right to own excessive firepower, fine. Go about it through the proper legal avenues, but do not pervert the Constitution. Aside from the Tenth Amendment, I don't pretend that the Bill of Rights grants me any particular right to grow plants. My cause fights for that right by consistently proving that it's utterly harmless, and by making the case that harmless things should not be outlawed. If you want to own an AR-15, you need to follow the same legal process and make the same justifications. And if you can't make that case, well, shit, that sucks. I'm sorry that the deaths of innocent people is so inconvenient to your glorified rock collection. My guns protect me and my family from martial law when the government comes to take me away. <laughs> really think this way? Okay, Rambo, you do that. Do people really think that any amount of personal firepower is going to protect them from this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or any of this? Bill O'Reilly even scoffs at this idea. And if you're farther right than Bill O'Reilly, you need to re-enter the atmosphere because it's lonely out in space. This concept you're describing might have been true in World War II era Europe when this was considered imposing, but I have a newsflash for you. War is increasingly automated and destructive. I don't care if you own a goddamn grenade launcher. If the United States military really wants to take you away, they're going to take you away. Yeah, they'll take me away over my cold, dead body. Yes, exactly. They're going to shoot you, and you're going to fucking die. And unless your gun doubles as a phoenix down, you're fucked. No amount of hollow point bullets in the world is going to save your ass. The United Nations is going to save your ass. Deal with it, Thomas Jefferson said. Thomas motherfucking Jefferson lived 150 years before the advent of the high capacity magazine. There's a reason progressives embrace the idea of a living, breathing constitution. Or am I missing the part in the preamble that reads, This constitution is to ignore all future changes in technology and culture. Fuck you, future spacemen. 1776 for life. Like I said at the beginning, I completely understand wanting to own a gun. Which is a hell of a lot more than I can say for like 90% of the GOP platform. And the libertarian in me was really hesitant to tell anybody that they can't do anything. It's just that the arguments I've seen in recent weeks are some of the worst arguments I have ever seen. Next thing you know, people will be trying to deflect blame onto completely irrelevant issues. I call on Congress today to act immediately to appropriate whatever is necessary to put armed police officers in every single school in this nation. And it, it sounds like what we need is lunatic control, and we don't have any. Now, you look at Israel just lost uh, their, their bid to thwart Palestine from being recognized by the United Nations. And now here we go. Here's a revenge killing in the U.S. sponsored by Israel. There was talk about how we have a million abortions a year, which cheapens life, and that somehow this is related to what happened. Indirectly, but somehow related. It's the fact that people sue a city so we aren't confronted with a manger scene or a Christmas carol. 
that lawsuits are filed to remove a cross that's a memorial to fallen soldiers. We, we ask why there's violence in our schools, but we've systematically removed God from our schools. And you mentioned earlier the, the sort of how people lose themselves in certain online activities, gaming, what have you. And I, I don't know what the background was of these guys, but it doesn't seem totally coincidental that they're both in their young 20s and young men. Oh. Has the GOP even heard of Occam's Razor? So, let's review, shall we? Militia. Not a militia. Militia. Not a militia. Militia. Not a militia. The sooner you pull your heads out of your collective asses, the sooner lunatics will stop being able to unleash horrific devastation upon our populace. <laughs> Tell me more about how criminals follow laws. <laughs> well... Actually, gun control laws have had a dramatic effect on this phenomenon in other countries. Events like Sandy Hook are eventually unheard of in countries like the UK, for example. So is your best argument really going to be to throw up your hands and say, well, if you can't beat them, join them? Sounds like you're exactly the type of people Obama was talking about when he asked if we were really willing to admit defeat and say that we were powerless to scum. And I thought liberals were the pussies.